Friday means fun time as we get to know another fantastic personality on PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, <laughs> you don't need to go nowhere. Just search around you and miss the music man. Yeah, yeah. Musician Kojo Entry, your favorite, my favorite. Good to see you, Kojo. Good to see you. I think it's been long. I, I last saw you in January when you performed at. Um, um, where? Labadi Beach Hotel. No, you, you performed at the conference center. Conference center. That was when last I saw okay. you. How have you been? You I'm doing great, Well, I'm doing great. I mean, we're still here. We thank God for that. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Back in the days in Dakoman, I remember my sister used to follow your nephew. And I mean, they were friends. Right? Okay. Because of that, she used to play your music a lot. And okay. that's when I developed the love for, for my your music. music. You see. And great. I think it's so great having the privilege to sit with you and ask you. I just want to know the man behind the man behind the music. <laughs> See you. Uh, I'm still learning about that man. <laughs> you know, but I mean, what I can tell you is that uh, uh, my name is Kojo Entry, born on Monday. My dad also born on Monday. My mom born on Monday. Oh my goodness. They had three. Three sons, we were all born on Mondays. It's a Monday family. So, oh, wow. I That's mean, where the energy is coming yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, my dad blessed me with the name of another uh, warrior called Entry. Entry Bia Sabranene, Entry Bue Sia Kondini Tigi Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, the, the one who sacrificed what it, his life to save many. Yeah. You know, so I believe. Uh, the music aspect of it was there when I was, I mean, a young boy. Every musician will tell you that, but mine was a bit to the extreme. So, but no one saw this coming. But, and of yeah. course, you think the name had an impact on you? I believe some of the things I do, and I believe uh, the songs that I write, um, I... If you have observed, I don't like mentioning names in my in my music. Mm -hmm. It's all because I feel I sing for everyone. I'm doing it for the people. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. So everybody should relate to it. Mm -hmm. And so probably that's the, the, the sacrifice bit of it. You but know. you did what for your mom. I for my mom and mine. I've, so I've done, I've done, I've done, I think I've mentioned Kwame Nkrumah's name in my songs. My mom, my dad, and uh, maybe so some your of our. Is some, Esiama. Esiama, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So do, you're from the Eastern region, right? Cool. For, I'm, to be precise. I'm from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, I believe we should stop. Pre, we should stop uh, playing that tribalistic game. Mm. The moment mm. I take myself, yes, I'm from Ghana. I'm from a specific part, you can, of part of the country, but I want everyone to relate to me. Mm. Uh, my wife is from Volta. Okay. Uh, so I'm a Ghanaian, but you see, when we step out of our, our bodies, the, I'm talking about not just our bodies, when we step out, out of this continent, yeah. we are seen as black, the black man, yeah. the African. They don't identify as the guy. It's okay. only when they dig into, you know. So I think we, it's about time we stop. But that's why I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> you see. I said it before and I'll keep saying it. I believe some positions, when they are given to you, you become like water. Yeah. The chief imam has become like transparent as water mm. because it belongs to everyone. Mm. And that's this, that, the, the, the level I want to get to. So I want to identify with everyone. So first of all, I'm an African, then a Ghanaian. Okay. Then you can bring the tribe thing in, but I won't mention that. <laughs> okay, so don't, don't forget that I told you my sister was a friend to your nephew. I know so you I know. know what I'm I know you know. About. I mean, the name, the name, you know, the name already gives you a direction. It gives you an idea of oh. it can be that or it can be, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I but 
We need to we need to start doing this. And we need to start of course, we're Ghanaians yeah. and Africans when Correct. we are out there. Yeah. I agree. But where did you grow up? Uh, my dad. I mean, what I can recollect is uh, I started as a as a young child. We were at Suhum. Then my dad moved to Accra. Then Dakuma was just. I mean, there were a lot of people flocking to Dakuma. Oh, so, so you, that's grew, you grew up in Dakuma? Yeah, I grew wow, up in Wow, but Dakuma. at that time when I was, um, I knew my sister was a uh, friend to your, your nephew, yeah. that's your sister's son, I, mm. I never saw you come around, or at that oh. time you had left? At that time, maybe I, had, I was already on this journey. I'm sure. Hopping around, <laughs> playing music everywhere, you know. With with it, with my first band, I believe. I'm sure if I had seen you that time, maybe by now I'll, I'll be a musician. You see? <laughs> I'll be a backing vocalist. You know? No, you'll be you be you be singing out there, and I'll be you know. <laughs> oh really? I'll be privileged to do yeah, that. Yeah. But how was growing up like? Well, it was great. It was great. I mean, um, music wasn't something that I did. I was a I was very shy. Oh really? No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That no one could conceive the idea that I could stand in front of a crowd and be able to speak to the crowd because I was very shy. During my school days, I would sing when I was walking to school. But when I got to school, no more singing. It was when school was over and I was walking back home, then my friends would be singing songs of uh, uh, Jimmy Cleave, Johnny Nash. I mean, everything we heard on radio. You know, there were places around uh, Cow Lane. There were little cubicles, kiosks that you could go and buy um, pamphlets of lyrics of songs. Okay. You know, and then so I'll buy them and I'll I'll I'll, I'll learn them and as I walk to school, I'll be singing. But mm -hmm. I was too shy to, for anyone <laughs> to hear me sing. You know, because you thought you were not perfect. Not just that I was just a shy boy. Mm -hmm. I was just a very shy boy. Okay. Yeah. So after learning all those lyrics, then what next? Um, as a teenager, my interest in music grew. So I was, uh, I was always chasing dance bands. Every, everywhere there was entertainment. There was a spot at the Akuma called Afinasu. You may, you, you may not know, it. <laughs> you know. And the uh, groups used to come there, concert bands as well as dance bands. And uh, I will, if I didn't have money to enter, I'll be at the back. Or my friends and I would do, there was something that we break fluid. Mm -hmm. Someone buys one ticket, you, you, you rub it on your palm and then stick it out for a while. And, and the stamp will come. The stamp will come. Sometimes you can get, you can get uh, I mean, away with it. <laughs> Sometimes, if there are too many people entering, you can get away. I mean, but when you step in, you don't step out anymore. <laughs> and when you are caught, know that you are going to get some dirty slaps. You know, this and this is the bounces. <laughs> this one, well, I've written about this in a, in, a, in a book that I'm working on. Wow. Yeah, you know, you know. But do you know the law of karma? Yes. Years later, people will do the same to enter my show. <laughs> Do people do that? Oh yes. I mean, if not, if not that, people will find other means to get, to get into to see you play. Some will jump the wall, you know. So I mean, it's, that's a law of karma. I see. Mm. So you, you used to do that just to go into. I had the... to. I had to. See. There were some some stars, local stars that I had to see. Mm. I mean, I when they were they were they were coming to my ghetto. Yeah. It was like, hey man. I needed to hear the person or see the person. Mm -hmm. Even if I, I couldn't enter, I would stay behind the, the, the hall and listen to the music, and it was like, wow. You know, I just used to admire them. You see their posters, you see, you know, it was, it was something special. <laughs> <laughs> so, so back then, how was, I mean, childhood like? And um, was it something that um, at a point you decided that, okay, I don't want to go to school again, I want to do music? Or, I mean, how did it all come up? Uh, you see, I used to uh, answer that question in a different way. But now, looking back, I will say that 
music found me. Okay, not the other way around. Beginning, I had to go search for music. But now I look at it as something that I was, I was blessed with. It was a mission. Mm. It was my mission to come here and do music. Yeah. So like, uh, was it uh, Jonah who was swallowed by the whale? <laughs> was it Jonah? Yes, <laughs> it was yes, Jonah. I think yeah. yes. He had a mission and he was trying to run away from his whole, every, uh, but he had to, uh, it's, if God gives you something as a gift, mm. he, he would direct your ways. That's what happened to me. I'm not saying I'd never had it tough. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but I believe all the, all the, uh, the ups and downs that I went through was more of a God refining, you. refining the gold okay. in me. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, childhood, it wasn't something my, my father chose for me. During those times, nobody wanted their, their, their children to pursue music. Even now, yes, you have all the, you know, people will like to see their kids and support them. Yeah. But I had to pursue it, do it all by myself. Okay. Beginning hide, even if I, I mentioned going to see groups play, I had to hide. And uh, when, when I came back home and the, the door was locked, I had to find a, a, a place to, to, to spend the night. So I moved to a, a wooden kitchen that my dad has built to store water. It wasn't a place for, for uh, I mean. Yeah, uh, to call a boat. To, exactly. But I had to move there because I wanted the, the freedom <laughs> to, <laughs> exactly. You understand what I'm saying? But, to, I mean. So you, you, you did all of that because you, you thought that there was something that you wanted to get, and that was your music career. No, then it wasn't that, it wasn't like I saw myself as the next biggest thing. And I'm, then it was more, I saw people, uh, there were two or three different types of bands. You have the, the, the concert bands, yeah. they were into drama and music like Nanam Pedu and his uh, band, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, uh, KJC and the Noble Kings. Yeah. Um, you know, there were a lot of them. They were into the master or the main star who is Nanam Pedu who would come and do his songs. And then there was a drama troupe that would come and act a play. A scene that they've rehearsed, that they would come on stage. And, and then there were the dance bands. The dance bands were into every song that became a hit in the West. Yeah. They will learn it and uh, play it. And then there were the cultural bands, like the Wulome, the Jajiloi, you know. And when you go to uh, the Ashanti region, there were the, those who were playing the uh, Adwa and, and the rest. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So my interest was I could sing those uh, Songs of uh, Jimmy Cliff, like I mentioned, Johnny Nash. Uh, there were a lot of <laughs> there were a lot of groups I could sing those songs. So I thought I was going to get in a dance band. Okay. Then the idea of composing my songs hadn't even, even occurred. No, 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 mm. no, 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 no. <laughs> so I entered a band to wear somebody else's shoes. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Because I got the chance to be with a group called the Boom Talents the first time. I went there singing songs of Jimmy Cliff, singing songs of uh, Matata. There was a group called Matata, the Cool and the Gangs, KC and the Sunshine, you know. As long as they were producing the hits, we could earn a living imitating them. Okay. But that was a culture that was, had been started long, long, long time before me. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The Huruban, the um, Jerry Hansen and the Ramless, they were way, 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 way before me. They were dance bands. You know, Huru, uh, Yeti, Mensa, and you know, those groups were dance bands. Okay. So that, that's the tradition that I followed. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. And, and thank God you turned out to be a fantastic musician. I love your music. And thank I you. can say that of more than a thousand and millions of Ghanaians and abroad okay. who love your music. Yeah. You want to know, I would pay anything. I mean, I've never missed your concerts. That's I great. I've never missed That's your great. concerts. Unless I'm not I'm in this country. If I'm around, I've never missed That's your great. concert. I, I want to know how we got here. How did this new Kojoentry, the Kojoentry would not even think about composing his music, the Kojoentry who wanted to just be part of a band to earn a living, boom. It's by the grace now of God. It's the music man. <laughs> it's by the grace of God. The maestro. I mentioned it before <laughs> that um, my mission, God, God gave me that gift. I remember uh, having to correct just a little something. I believe when I was being sent here, God said, my son, <laughs> go to the earth and share music with the world. My goodness. <laughs> you've, been, you've, been, you've been to my shows and I really appreciate that. I feel very comfortable talking to you Definitely. because you know what I do Definitely. on stage, crazy Definitely. things. And of course, I, you have the energy. Thank you. I, 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 didn't see this coming, but I thank God for the for this journey. Um, I get a gift of songs. He, he, God blesses me with music, and if you ask me, I'm I'm working on a new album. Oh, the, that that new album is ready, but you ask, if you should ask me, what will be on that album that will come after the next? I will not be able to tell you. I have a lot of songs. I write a lot of uh, a pattern here. Mm. I get words that I believe I can use, and then I'll just write that phrase down. It takes a long time, then the song, that phrase will come calling, hey, this is my time. Mm. You know, a song like Minyan Taban was written, way, 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 I wrote that song there were other songs that came after Minyantaban, mm. and they, were, they came out, but Minyantaban was still sitting there waiting for its right time. <laughs> you know, that's how it works. Okay. I never planned this, but if I look back, I see this journey that God has, has I mean, taken me through. And every step of the way, even the difficult times, there, there were times that uh, you get so discouraged. There are things that you hear that may stop you from pursuing a certain direction. And, but God has always been there with me. I have this, uh, this thing that if I feel it is right, I'll do it. It, it doesn't... It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. So when I'm writing and when I'm composing the songs, I'm more like Gaddafi, <laughs> <laughs> a dictator. Oh my God. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm only saying this, I'm more like a dictator. Yeah. I want it in a certain direction. And that's the way I want it. That's the way Nothing I want it, exactly. It. If, if it works, it works to my advantage. Mm. But even if it doesn't work, I learn, I learn from, it not being able to penetrate through, yeah. you know, and sometimes um, some of the songs that I write, I, I try to take my listeners on a journey, okay. a special adventure that we go and explore a new world, mm. something that hasn't been done before, before. where's that hasn't been used before. <laughs> That's what I want to do. You love adventure. <laughs> I do love adventure. But, but I mean, certainly, your, your parents were not um, in support of, I mean, no. anything music. All they wanted you to What did they want you to do then? Anything but a musician. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad was uh, too occupied with his, own, uh, with his own ambitions that when it started, it started like, eruption of a volcano. Mm -hmm. It was underground. You know, and the lava 
comes out, you see these little bubbles here, and then the explosion, <laughs> and you can't stop it. <laughs> That's how it, mine started. You understand what I'm saying? So it was a, it, do anything. It was a volcano. He couldn't stop me. Ooh. No one could. Whoa. No one could. Wow. No one. I see. No, that, I mean, even, even my approach to it, and everyone around me knows, music comes first. Before any other thing. Before any other thing. Wow. Julius Kojo MP is my guest tonight on PM Personality Profile. He's been sharing some wonderful thoughts, and I'm enjoying this interview already. And of course, when I return from that break, we'll be talking about his most challenging moments. Again, there are many times that I've seen Kojo explain to people to sing the lyrics of his music well. We'll be exploring that and also talk about the theme that runs through his music almost all the time, love. Is he himself romantic? We'll be finding out shortly when I come back from this break. But again, remember I told you in this interview, we'll give it to you anyhow, any way, any style. And so, Kojo will do one music for me. I will roll the Wheel of Fortune wherever it, it lies. Kojo will do that music. And, and maybe, just maybe, we'll do a collab. So this is the wheel I told you about. I'm in front of the wheel now. And as you can see, it has a number of songs by Kojo Inchi. I'm going to spin this wheel because I'm privileged. Kojo has promised that once I spin, the one I choose, he's going to perform for us. So we're lucky, aren't we? Let's go on the wheel and do the spinning. There we go. And there we go. It's Brebre Noah. Kojo, over to you. Yeah. 
Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, Julius Kojo Entry. He doesn't like using the Julius, by the way. He says he's an African man. He wants everybody to relate to him. The only time you use Julius, perhaps, is when the queen <laughs> starts using an African name. But of course, it's been an interesting interview. Kojo, what was your challenging moment growing up? And especially when you had your eye on something that... Um, I mean, not everybody really supported you, but you knew where you wanted to go. Okay, let me address this one here. <laughs> My name is Kojo Entry. <laughs> I don't want to dilute it with Julius or anything. Julius died in Rome <laughs> long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> Julius Caesar died in Rome a long time ago. And uh, I'm so proud to be born on a Monday, and like I mentioned it, Earlier. It's a lively day. Be blessed with the name Entry. <coughs> you know, so I've stopped using Julius. You know, so Aisha, please address me <laughs> by Kojo. Stay or, there, Kojo okay. Entry. Nice. Thank okay. <laughs> um, now let's let's come back to the challenges issue. Oh, the challenges. I don't know how to address this because as an African musician, as a Ghanaian musician trying to live on music, you go through challenges every day. Yeah. You know? Um, one particular thing that I can uh, zero this conversation on when you want to speak about when I started out. Yeah. When I started growing locks. Okay. The, the, the Nubian locks. Mm -hmm. some, call, some would like to call it dreadlocks, mm -hmm. but I don't. <laughs> you prefer Nubian locks. Because okay. the word dread has a, a negative connotation. Connotation. Uh, to, uh, connotation. connotation, correct. Um, and so when I started growing my locks, every time I visited my dad, I had to like tuck, it, tuck them in <laughs> neatly. <laughs> And make sure that it was, you know, that I wasn't going to get, hey, and then a watch and I said, you know. And that wasn't the only challenge. Then, then uh, this kind of hair wasn't in vogue like it is right now. Mm -hmm. So um, we faced, we faced, uh, we, were, we were shown in many places. I remember there were broadcasting houses that will not show anything of a Guinean with locks. Mm. But they were, they were showing other uh, a Blondie with Nati, Bob Marley with the locks. They were showing their videos. But a Guinean, the those are the challenges, you know. But it's, as, a, as, a, as a musician, it wasn't the only thing. The type of music I, I started recording and releasing were a bit different from what people were used to. Yeah. You know, everything that was out there was the bouncy, up tempo songs, and the people were, you know, Jumping then I, <laughs> I came out with this slow ballad, you know, that you couldn't really move to. It doesn't move you when it is played the first time. Yeah. You need to listen to the words listen to the way the songs are shaped and it grows on you yeah if i'm lucky mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand what i'm saying <laughs> so the 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 uh, ups and downs you face them all the time mm. but it's been good it's god been has good. been good to me wow so um how many songs do you have to your credit or let me say uh, you have in your repertoire oh i i mean i have a, a repertoire that can last for for six hours or more but I even that those will be just my songs because I know and um, during your shows mm. you finish performing like three hours four hours yeah. and stop and yeah. people say oh umbo, where you? and you'll be like ah, I'm in boy no. <laughs> okay let's play yeah, and yeah, we'll yeah. keep on playing yeah, I, be I, I believe I have, I have a repertoire that can last for maybe eight hours mm. eight hours but I was a performer before mm. becoming a recording artist okay I think that those are the those are the demarcations that, that sometimes we do not 
we do not uh, give to artists in this industry. Yeah. You see, everything, every step that you take must be like you start from class one, you go to class two, yeah. class three, and grow in a system yeah. that molds you. It molds your, your compositions, it molds your, 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 your out, I mean, how you present yourself to the public, it, then you become a brand. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Um, for me, the opportunity I had with the bands that I used to be with and the songs that I played with those bands that we, I hadn't even thought of composing my songs, where the, the times that I was going through some kind of education to learn how p other musicians structure their songs, maybe from an intro of the song into a verse, into a chorus, then another verse, then a bridge. Okay. We call something a bridge okay. before the, the coda. I hope I'm not using too many uh, you, you to confuse you. But <laughs> those are the all. structures. Those are the basic things you have to know if you want to be called a musician. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? There are some basic things that you should know. A minor chord, a major chord. You are setting moods. A musician sets mood. I want to set a mood for you when you are sad Definitely. and you want to cry. You need a song to cry. Crying mood. helps. Crying is healing. So sometimes when you cry, it and after you, it stress. relieves you. So you need a song that. Will, that's why we have special songs for for funerals, <laughs> special <laughs> songs for weddings, yes. special songs for different different yeah, moods. Exactly. And, and so those are those are the basics that I mean. I learned that the hard way mm. by being on the road practicing. Uh, music, but like j hopping from one town to the next. In during occasions, those were your cool, cool season. <laughs> you know? Then you go and make some money. We play, we play at uh, Takrade, you sleep in the car. By the time we get there, you're doing an afternoon jump. Mm -hmm. After the afternoon jump, a whole night session of about six hours. Wow. You know, so I just... But, I mean, those are, those are uh, precious moments that I will not change it for anything. Hmm. Yeah. All your music, um, love runs through. I want to... Most of it. Most of, most most of, most of your ones, music. Yeah. I mean, the theme is love. Yeah. And do you write your own songs? Yes, I do. You write all of them? All of them. Uh, yes, I've done a few covers. Okay. But I write most of my songs. Most I mean, I've written 99% of my songs. Mm. I did I Give Anything. That was a, a, a cover. Okay. I did uh, Odoye De Sinsika. That's a cover, but I added something to it. I did Mesan uh, Maba. Uh, I, I like to... I like to also shine some of the lights on my pioneers. I did Ponkwa Bodam. Ponkwa Bodam was was written by the station master, Jason, the late Jason. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There are some classics that I feel proud to cover. Okay. You know, and if I can add something to them, I mean, I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm getting there. I want to do yeah, this. but I've written most of my, my songs. Interesting. But I, I want to find out what goes into your music because I've told you from the beginning mm -hmm. that I love your music. Okay. I just can't stand it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't stop dancing mm -hmm. any of your music, yeah. even the ones that's supposed to put me in a sad mood. Okay. I will jump to it. Okay. And one thing I like about you, you know how to pull the crowd mm -hmm. along with you. Mm -hmm. What really goes into your mind? I mean, what, when you're putting down all those lines, what goes into your mind? A lot of things. Um, I am a super emotional person, very, wow. very emotional okay, person. Okay, that translates into your music. Exactly. And some of the lyrics you have to be very emotional to understand 
how people feel, Definitely. especially women. Yes. And you know, I, so especially <laughs> women. You know, my music from the onset has been targeted at this certain special people, women, mm -hmm. you know, the female, because um, men, we like to like dance, you know, to forget our worries, <laughs> you know. Yes. Women have a, a way of, uh, of expressing, expressing their, emotions. their emotions. And they are deep. Very Women deep. are very deep. Very deep. So once they gravitated towards my songs and they understood the kind of words that Kojo is using and they became the fans, they brought the men along. Yes. Because every time they sit in the car, whether the car is theirs or the car belongs to your husband, they will say, okay, if I could you entry seat in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the man is forced to listen to the music. That's you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but but it, it, for me, it's been a blessing. Mm. Um, when I'm writing a song, I want everything to be fresh. The title, the lyrics, because singing about love limits you as an artist. Mm. There are others singing about, ooh, yeah, ooh, you know, here you, and then at a certain point I decided this was going to be my direction. Okay. Because you need to define where you want to be. You will not find my music at funerals. Yeah. Even though I've done a few, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done a few. Mm. But I want my music to be for the living. Mm. And my music is like the pillow. Actually, my music is the pillow. It's the pillow. Because after you've done all the jumping, <laughs> you go back to your <laughs> bedroom to rest, and the pillow is the there sleep. waiting for you. It is the softest thing you lay your head on. Mm -hmm. It absorbs your, your innermost feeling. Yeah. Things that you cannot say to anyone. You lie on your bed. You think the pillow thinks with you. Yeah. I mean, it helps you to think through yes. it. So my music is, uh, the, and, and that's love. Yeah. You know, love is something everybody will yearn for it, will give it. Even the Bible speaks about loving your neighbor as thyself. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All the good books talks about love, love, love. You can never go wrong with that. Definitely. You know, so I mean, <laughs> but the, I love uh, introducing new things into my music. Okay. I love making my, making my own phrases, finding titles that hasn't been overused. Or do you some bro? Or does that, that's been overused. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? I'm not. I'm not trying to downplay anyone. Definitely. But what I'm saying is that those words yeah. and I, I like virgin words. Mm. Words that are virgin. Okay. So that I become the one who broke the virginity. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> yeah. Because you're so um. You put all of these together and you put yourself sure. in the music you have to. so that you know how the one listening will be feeling about it. I've yeah. seen you a number of times mm. trying to explain to people this uh, part of the music. People sing it this way. Uh, that's not actually what I said. Yeah. Then you'd be explaining. Sure, it's such sure. a big deal. It's such a big deal for me. <laughs> no, it's such a big deal for me. Yeah. Every note that I sing in a song means something to me. Mm. Every word that I use in the songs means something else to me. And so if I see, if, when, when the people get it, it's a joy. Okay. If they don't get it, I pray that they will one day get, get the word. Okay, in a song like uh, Medopa, there's a part that goes, Now me share when you are mem. I hear everybody singing, I'm sure when you are mad. Looking at your eyes and looking into your eyes are two different things. Okay. 
I said, na me show we ni wa mem. The mem. Okay, the mem. Let so that I can I mean stare into your eyes, into not at your eyes. Do you get what I'm trying to yeah. say? Looking at your eyes, but doesn't really. Nah, but when you want them, if there is a secret there, if there is something, yeah, you are not happy that I can help you get out of. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, metis will be a talk, will be penyomno, and they singing it, that's a joy. Mm -hmm. But if they get the the words right, I'm overjoyed. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I find that in a lot of the, but I don't blame. People for not getting it. Yeah. Sometimes the words clashes with the sound. Yes. So you may not get it. You know. But I make sure at the back of every CD that I, I released, the words were boldly written. Mm -hmm. There was a booklet that had the words written in them for people to. I didn't want them to like <laughs> suffer to get those words. You understand what I'm saying? So that they will not be they will know the words. It in because, house. like I said, now, you have a lot of the young guys uh, doing versions of my songs. And Fabinko, it's, as we speak, it's been covered by uh, a, a guy in Ho Holland. Mm -hmm. That's for the Netherlands market, okay. Frena. Mm -hmm. And Fabinko has been covered there. Okay. You go to Spain, it's been covered by another artist in Spain. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of the young guys singing the songs, and I love it. Yeah. But some of them do want to exaggerate, or they want to do it their own way, and I don't mind. But some of it doesn't add anything to the song. Mm -hmm. If you can't add anything to it, just leave it where it is. <laughs> do it as you heard it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But it means degrading. Because it means so much to me. It means so much to me. Mm. Yeah. As we go on another break, don't forget we need to go to the Wheel of Fortune. Any music we get, Kojo will do that for us. I'm back here. A Wheel of Fortune made up of Kojo entry songs. I'm going to spin. Wish me luck. Surprise! And because I chose surprise, it's going to be a surprise. Sit down and enjoy. <laughs>
have indeed had a lot of fun. Could you, how I wish we could do this over and over again. So I much. really, really had fun. Thank you Glad so you much for letting us in your life. Viewers, like I said from beginning, next week there will be another edition of Ajoa and Kojo Entry on PM Personality Profile. You don't want to miss that. Stay with me on the Joy News channel. My beautiful dress was made by Millie K Garment. Call them and also visit their showroom on the Dakuma Nyamiche Road. Kojo, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening.